Following World War II, the United States experienced a remarkable shift in government funding for science and technology. With the significant discoveries and advancements made during the war, such as penicillin, radar, and most famously, atomic weapons, it became evident that supporting basic research and nurturing scientific talent were crucial for the advancement of scientific knowledge. Renowned scientist Vannevar Bush, an overseer of the Manhattan Project and key figure in U.S. science and technology development after the war, proposed the establishment of a National Research Foundation in 1945 to support essential basic research. This laid the foundation for a strong government-funded research capability in the post-war era. After World War II, the number of new inventions supported by government funding exploded, with thousands of new patents filed each year. Among these are such successes as microchips, LED lights, supercomputers, and others that form the bedrock of our modern technological marvels. However, the U.S. innovation system at the time was unable to fully capitalize on the commercial potential of this government-funded research. The U.S. government retained ownership of many inventions supported by federal funding and licensed technology on a non-exclusive basis. This meant that inventors had no incentive to invest in commercializing these patents of high-risk technologies. By 1980, federal agencies owned the exclusive rights to over 28,000 patents, but less than 5% of these patents were licensed to companies. The rest sat on government shelves without a development plan to benefit consumers. In the 1970s, the United States faced an economic recession, declining productivity, and increased international competition from countries like Germany and Japan. To address these challenges, policymakers recognized the importance of promoting technology transfer from federally funded institutions to industry. In 1980, Congress enacted the Bayh-Dole Act, which allowed federally funded inventors to transfer technology to private companies by licensing intellectual property rights. Alongside this act, the stevenson Weidler Technology Innovation Act of 1980 further strengthened these efforts by allowing technology owned by the federal government or developed with federal funding to be transferred to state and local governments as well as to the private sector. After the passage of these bills, universities, nonprofit research institutions, and companies now were incentivized to pursue commercialization opportunities because they could earn royalties on patents. These efforts to facilitate technology transfers have paid off. Between 1996 and 2020, transfers from university licenses created millions of new jobs, thousands of new startup businesses, and contributed upwards of $1 trillion in GDP growth. Technology transfer was responsible for 850 new commercial products that became available to the public in 2022 alone. Despite the successes of the Bayh Dole Act, the legislation has faced recent debates. One area of discussion revolves around the act's granting of marching rights, which authorized the federal government to grant patent rights to third-party organizations if it deems the transfer of that particular technology has not been sufficient. Healthcare activists have advocated for using marching rights to control the price of certain medications. However, while drug pricing is a concern, using marching rights in this way could have the unintended consequence of stifling further innovation. It is true that the federal environment in the United States has changed dramatically since the passage of the Bayh-Dole Act and the stevenson Widler Act. A 2019 detailed report prepared by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, outlines five strategies to clarify programs, policies, and procedures, facilitating further public-private cooperation, improving federal IP data reporting, and streamlining the waiver process for U.S. manufacturing. The Bayh-Dole Act must continue to be strengthened, not eroded. It is critical that changes to the law are carefully considered to ensure that it continues to successfully promote technology transfer. It is imperative that the U.S. implement technology transfer policies that stimulate innovation and support a regional ecosystem of inventors, entrepreneurs, and investors.